Two things happened simultaneously in the long 19th century. It was a period of rapid industrial change transforming the landscape. It was also a period in which that landscape was surveyed systematically for the first time. On Living the Machines, we were keen to leverage that vast amount of data about the landscape to understand what the impact was on the lives of ordinary people in the long 19th century. So working with ordnance survey maps is something that a lot of historians of Britain, of Ireland, and, and indeed of other parts of the world are, are really used to doing. But they're used to doing that sort of with one map at a time, a few maps, the maps that can fit on a table in the reading room. The thing that we really wanted to experiment with on Living With Machines was being able to make use of uh, the very, very large collections of ordnance survey maps that are now being digitized, engaging with the National Library of Scotland and, of course, also with the British Library because we ended up digitizing some, some extra maps to, to fill in some previous gaps in the NLS corpus. Not only we digitized over 30,000 maps, but we also georeferenced around 15,000. Georeferencing is a quite a manual task. It means attaching uh, geo coordinates to an image. And uh, we were able to really introduce the idea of working with maps uh, at scale, uh, as, as data scientists like to say, uh, to humanities researchers, to historians. Uh, so we can go from working with three maps to working with 15, 16, 25,000 maps at a time to really think about not just um, change over time by looking at the different editions of maps as they were printed over time, but also change across space and allowing us to look at the presentation, the, the presence and the absence, uh, the distribution of different kinds of things that are present on OS maps as features like railways. How can we take a step past simply browsing, kind of flying around like a bird, looking over the map from above, to really analyzing that content across uh, the whole kind of scale of the nation. And what we decided to try to do was to ask the question, can you extract visual information from these maps at such a scale that you can find things out about the changing landscape of the British Isles across the whole of the 19th century? This hasn't really been tried before, so we were really stepping into new ground. Uh, and we used methods taken from medical imaging and computer vision tweak them a little bit to work better with historical maps, and tried some experiments. Not only to figure out how to sort of process them using data science methods, and in particular computer vision uh, and machine learning, but also to figure out how do we work with data that is predicted by a machine. To do this, we created a pipeline uh, called MapReader which allows you to uh, start with what we call input, uh, which are the uh, scans of maps, and the output are uh, predicted information about the content on, on those maps. It was a machine learning tool, but also actually, actually also a bit of a close reading tool in the sense that we wanted to analyze maps by learning to annotate them. So basically we started by um, looking very closely at maps, so we call this the patches. So we have a map and we would take like small patches from this map and then try to annotate what is actually on there. So try to make sense of the map on a very kind of zoomed in level. But once you do this, you can actually then train a model to replicate those annotations and actually then apply this to the whole, whole country basically. The digital humanities is often framed as a field in which we take methods from the sciences and bring them into the humanities. And our project has absolutely um, inverted that paradigm. We are developing methods um, that are not just being used by humanities scholars, but also by uh, scientists. We have uh, people who are interested in phenotype maps, so biologists who are using the methods that we've been developing on living machines. The method underneath map reader could be applied to so many other uses. So a good example of the potential of map reader comes from a workshop I was involved in where we had uh, ecologists, uh, geographers, groups of different people thinking about how we could understand 
the use of land in the past in order to plan the use of land in the future. So this kind of longitudinal or long-term data analysis over time is particularly exciting for things like um, environmental and climate change analysis, looking uh, specifically at um, uh, sort of forest cover uh, in the UK is one of the things that uh, there's a number of conversations happening around um, coastal erosion, uh, the course of rivers changing. So there's a lot of things where it's incredibly important to think about um, maps in relation to more modern imagery. We're really excited to work with geographers, um, urban demographers, and other people, environmental scientists, working with those kind of more modern data sets to think about how we can bridge that span of time um, in ways that are appropriate to the sources uh, that we're working with. A really nice finishing touch for the project was that MapReader was awarded the Roy Rosenweg Prize in Innovation and Digital History from the American Historical Association and George Mason University. This is the first time that the prize was awarded to an open source software library as opposed to a book. We were able to accept the prize in person in San Francisco, which was very exciting for me and the rest of the team and really just finish the project on a very high note.